Hello everyone, I'm Jay from Boulder Creek Railroad, and in this video I'm going to be showing you a revised project that I did in the past. This was recently redone, and I wanted to just show you the uh, fix-up version of this model, uh, that way uh, I can kind of just get it out there. A while back I worked on a project and I released it, uh, and it was a CA-5 caboose. Uh, from the Pacific Railroad and I designed it for end scale and uh, I spent a couple of days on it and it was uh, Okay, it, I released it to the public. I put a price on it put it on my Colts page and I just kind of forgot about it uh, and I had it The test model that I did the video on for uh, putting it together and painting it uh, And I just kind of it just kind of sat in the background. I never really used it and I just didn't really care uh, and then I got my, or pre-ordered my turbine, or turbine. Uh, and then I was like, oh, well, I should probably pull out that model and uh, start seeing if I can get it, you know, working again. And maybe I should finish up some more detailing and uh, make it look okay. And I got it out and it just looked horrible. I just, I, I realized, oh my gosh, this is a horrible looking model. Uh, the paint was really blotchy and really uneven it didn't even look right and the model had no detail whatsoever it just looked like a box with a box on top um, which I guess what a caboose kind of looks like but it, in this case it was a bad thing so I thought to myself well I should probably redo this because this was not good so I spent some time uh, about a week's time redoing the model and I used the original uh, from the from the first project as the base and I just kind of added details to that uh, and uh, I, I think it turned out much better I, I really hope so uh, I did a lot of added detailing and uh, in this video I'm just going to be kind of showing you that model the the redone one and just kind of going over some of the details uh, and differences between the two original and this new revised edition of the model so uh, without further ado, let's just pull out the model here. So here it is. Here's the uh, revised. Let's get some focus there. There we go. Here's the revised model. Uh, as you can see, it's a lot better looking than the original, and it doesn't look so blocky, and the dimensions look a lot better than the original. Now, the first thing I have to say is that this is not on the chassis that comes with the original model. This is like one of the caboose chassis. Uh, just a normal caboose chassis that you get from like those old uh, ATSF um, cabis, I guess. It's it's like a, you know the really cheap ones you can find on eBay for five bucks. I just had one lying around from a project, um, and I just decided to put it on top of that. There's nothing against the one I originally designed. I just kind of wanted to put it on this one because it had the handrails already on it because um, the handrails, especially for end scale, are very hard to design and print properly. So I kind of don't really worry about putting handrails on. It's just easier to make them with wire, which is what I generally do anyway with most of the models I print. So I don't include those in. So you do get the original chassis. The original chassis that you can 3D print does work perfectly fine. Uh, you should just be able to pop that guy right on there, but I wanted to put mine on this, so um, just note that it's a little bit different uh, chassis-wise. So, let's work on some of the details on the main body. First things first, uh, I added all the rib detail. You can see these ribs here, they're all around. I have the correct, at least I think I have the correct number of ribs on the model. Um, those go all the way around on the other side as well, and um, they really help uh, give the model a little more detail and realism to it. I mean, like before it was just completely flat and that wasn't realistic at all. So uh, I added those ribs. Uh, I think it definitely adds a lot more detail to the model and gives it a better look. The second thing I did was on the windows on the model, I added these little overhangs, kind of like window sills to the model uh, because the prototype had them and I didn't add them to the original. So I added them here. So on all of the windows on the model, those have been added. Uh, the biggest thing I really did notice about this was my roof was wrong. Uh, the, the cabooses or cabise or goodbye, whatever you want to call them, uh, that the Union Pacific used, for, especially in the CA class, uh, were uh, kind of triangular roofs. And uh, this one that I originally designed was round. And uh, the round roof had no detail on the top except for the walkway. 
I don't know why I did that. I think I just kind of glanced over and thought, oh, because most roofs are around on, on the, the caboose. So I just assumed that and it wasn't correct. So this time I fixed that. It's triangular now and I added a ton of roof detail. It's kind of hard to I'll try to prop this thing up real fast. Put a pencil there anyway. So as you can see here, the roof actually has detail on it this time. I added roof ribs. Um, that are supposed to be there on the model and these little block things that are kind of, I don't know if they're support or what they're used for, but they're on the prototype. So I added those in and same thing on the top of the cupola as well, I added those. And I helped reprofile and make the uh, walkways on the roof a little bit better. Now on the prototype, they are metal um, and they have like this cross pattern, but it's pretty much impossible to do that in N-Scale and make it look realistic. So generally when people do that, they took they take a, like this fine mesh and they lay it over the top. I can't do that because I don't have the experience or the money to do that right now. So what I did is I kept the original look. If you want, you put the mesh right over the top, it looks fine. But I also added kind of a wood grain or metal uh, sheet detailing to it. So it gives it a little bit of look. So that really helps um, give the model a little bit more look. Uh, and it helps amplify the realism of the model a lot more. So um, there you go. I mean, I, I'm really sorry that I didn't do a lot or didn't put a lot of effort into the original model that I put out there. I mean, I did put a lot of effort into it, but I didn't do as much as I should have. And um, now that I have redone this, I'm hoping that um, that people will actually like think this is a decent model because I, I mean it wasn't really a bad model to begin with I just think I did a lot better job on this one it shows off my skills a lot more better than that original model that I did so um, if you have purchased this model before on my Colts page don't worry this isn't gonna be a, this is gonna be re-uploaded to the exact same one so if you've already purchased the model you can go back to the Colts page and download these new files completely free of charge um, if you want to get the, these files, if you haven't gotten them, you're going to have to pay for them. But it's just for the people who've already purchased them, they're free of charge. It just happens on Colts. So um, don't worry, you don't have to pay anything. The price will remain the same. It's like a buck fifty or something, I keep, or something like that. I keep them really cheap. Uh, so um, I just wanted to show this off to you guys and kind of uh, just show you that I, I, I did redo this um, and that um, it, I mean I've run this thing a lot I actually really like it especially considering the fact that the only company that made uh, CA-5 or 4 or any of the number of caboose that the Union Pacific used was Intermountain I believe they bought those from some company and they were kits or something I don't know but those models are very hard to find and generally when you find them they're like 50 bucks because people upcharge them uh, especially in the Union Pacific colors for some reason. I, I mean, there's other like road names like this one that has this really cool kind of turquoise color and you generally can find those for like 30 bucks, but the ones for Union Pacific are very expensive. I, I, that's why I kind of decided to build this model in the first place is because they were so expensive and so hard to find. So I decided, you know, why not build it myself? So there you go. Um, here's my model. Um, it's on my Colts page. I'll have a link to it down in the description if you'd like to buy it or if you already have and want to get the updated files. They're there. Um, so uh, thank you for watching and as always, happy railroading.